Hello and welcome back to my little YouTube channel and in today's film I want to um, share with you a new little business venture we got going. A while back a uh, Lithuanian producer of, um, he called it glamping pods, a Lithuanian producer of glamping pods contacted my Swedish business and asked for help um, selling and distributing those products through Scandinavia and we looked into it and we made some ads for him just to see what interest there were but it was hard to get it going it seemed like like interest was not hot and we were very busy working with the tiny houses we were selling in Sweden already or the cabins and, and stuff so we, we were we wanted to stay focused on the main business there already but then these here glamping pods that look like this actually I can show you I have a page here where you can see so I'll film it with my phone you can see my screen um, Exterior photos. This is glamping pots. It's nice little wooden cabins, but they were hard for us to to sell in Sweden. With that, though, we didn't quite forget about them or let it go completely because me and my wife kept talking about it, and and there was a time when we had a lot of visitors. It's calmed down since Corona times, but we had a lot of visitors coming in, and sometimes it was hard to house all the guests and, and we got to think that maybe you know that wouldn't be a bad thing to have here in Florida one of those glamping pods we could have it in our backyard and that got me thinking that well maybe interest is bigger here in the United States than it was in Sweden so I put an ad out on Craigslist here in Florida just to see what people thought of them and it turned out that I, I quite a lot of people got curious and I, I started getting a bunch of emails with people wanting to come see them and and, and potentially buy them or, or see if they could order them. So with that in our heads that oh man there's interest for it here we we share the idea with my brother-in-law and, and he decided yeah these are interesting and I'd actually love to be part of that so he went in and helped us fund the first order. So we decided on a bigger version than the one I made an ad for at first and we talked to the producer and we found that if we put them in a 20 foot container we should be able to get three of those pods in one container. Um, so we put in the first order and and that was supposed to be three of these bigger pods in a 20 foot container and then it came to getting that container from Lithuania to here in Florida and that brings us I suppose to what this video is more or less about the actual import of products to United States and what we had to do was we had to begin by um, place that order put them in a container and then we um, had to get shipping brokers because doing all that paperwork involved with getting a container from Europe to United States was really hard on our own so we um, had our producer of these uh, glamping pods find an ex uh, export broker in Lithuania so he used a shipping broker in Lithuania who was doing the exporting and that company also gave us the best quote on the actual shipping so we, I think we're paying, we were supposed to pay around $2,500 for shipping a 20 foot container from Lithuania to Miami. Um, so they helped us arrange the actual shipping and did all the export paperwork. And then on our part, we had to go find an import broker here in the United States. And when I started Googling, there was quite a lot of them around. So I found one local to the port where our stuff is coming in because I figured it's helpful to have them down there and know what's going on and, and just Google and there was one with really good reviews so I called them and told them what we wanted to do and they said no problem here is how it works and uh, then I've been having to sort of like send a bunch of paper from the export broker to the import broker and make sure they have everything they need and they also wanted the invoices for the actual products we bought so they could put a value on them and uh, the only thing that I find difficult with this import is that no one has been able to give me the actual um, payments we have to do for customs and toll because apparently that depends a lot about the product itself and how finished they are and how but no one could give me an exact price so what we had to do is we paid a deposit to the US shipping broker and they will um, have to figure out when the products are here and I guess when the container is scanned or gone through by the US Customs, then they'll know what our toll, import toll or import taxes or whatever you want to call it would be. So that's in the air, but we're hoping it's going to be quite moderate. And I've Googled around, it can vary from like, I think it was from 2 to 20%, but I might be completely off here because I didn't invest too much time in it since we are using this 
shipping broker and that's what I'd recommend anyone to do who's doing this because the risk of stuff not working out is quite big if you don't know exactly what you're doing and there's a lot of costs involved I realize with like if the container gets stuck in port or something you start having to pay uh, for storage and that, that can add up quick to 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 be a lot more than it would cost to just hire the help of, of getting all that paperwork done so our producer went and got the export broker in Lithuania who also get um, arranged the, the actual shipping and we got our US shipping broker and then we had to send some papers back and forth between them and make sure everybody had all the documents needed and then the container um, was supposed to took off but just when it was loaded and they were going to close the door and, and send it away they realized that uh, they had miscalculated uh, on about one inch on our pods so the pods were packed in flat packs like this which is actually quite brilliant so they take very little space and uh, as you can see we're not really shipping any air but what happened was the 20 foot container was too tight so they couldn't close the door properly and get the, the you need a special lock to make sure that the, the containers haven't been opened from from the shipper to the receiver that's how they keep us I guess liable for for whatever is is in the container um, but we had to in the like last minute change it from a 20 foot container to a 40 foot container and that 40 foot container is here being loaded and and with that 40 foot container came uh, an extra invoice of another four hundred dollars but um, luckily the the producer realized that, that the mistake was on his part so he, he took that cost for us which was nice but but that means that the 40 foot container would cost us or like the price of shipping this 40 foot container from um, Lithuania uh, which is a Baltic country on the on the Baltic Sea to uh, Miami Florida is three thousand dollars and then we're estimating another thousand dollars or so for hauling that container from the port of Miami to the, the property where we want to offload them and keep them and the port we sent it away from was called Klaipeda it's a city in Lithuania on the Baltic Sea so we, the container was brought to the port of Klaipeda and then we could start following it on on its track so here is what that looks like this is actually where I've been having a lot of fun I loved following the container like this the whole way from so on September 4th it was uh, brought to the shipper and then uh, was loaded on board a ship called West Amelie on September 13th and West Amelie this is really fun to me I don't know if you share it but I, I love boats so I'm, I keep doing this this is West Amelie that's the small boat and it went from um, Lipeda, which is right here on the coast of Lithuania it sailed over here and through the Kiel Canal which cuts off down here between um, the German city of Kiel and Bremerhaven and then this is Denmark on top so if you don't go through the Kiel Canal you have to sail up around Denmark but it went through the Kiel Canal to Rotterdam which is the port down here in Holland it's the biggest port in Europe I think and then you can see here okay so it, it discharged in Rotterdam discharged in Rotterdam and stayed there for uh, three days and then it was loaded on board in Rotterdam on a ship called Brussels and Brussels is this ship it's a much bigger one so our container is on board that ship right now and it sailed from Rotterdam up to Bremerhaven which is up here so Rotterdam is a little further down here and it sailed back up here and I think if I click this here map, I can show you a little bit more. There it is. It's laying in port in Bremerhaven right here. That's the ship. And I don't know if it's going to do a few more stops on the way out before we see it coming over here. But then the idea is that, so you see all those, there's all the ships in the world. This is called vesselfinder.com, this homepage. And then we're gonna sail from, <laughs> you can barely see because of all the little ships you're gonna sail from here in uh, Holland over the Atlantic Sea to Miami down here I don't know if this works, yeah look at this zoom into Miami
down here and then we'll have to drive it on road up to Tampa where we are we could there's a port in Tampa but those big ships don't go here and it's more expensive to load it on another ship and drive over there than it would be to just bring it right up to Tampa this way so right now the container is on Brussels and about to cross the Atlantic Ocean and it will be here in 13 days I think this is really cool when we have it here we'll bring it from the port of Miami up to the to the property where we're gonna offload them and that's hopefully when I'll be able to do the next video for you where I'll uh, let you know more about what we're planning to do because as of now we have some options I'll, I'll show you here again this is the ad I have out right now so I made one ad in the United States and we're getting some interest so one option is to just resell them right away with with a little profit but very likely we are going to use these pods ourselves um, for our own development but uh, not 100 percent sure yet so we'll see either we sell some or we keep them and, and get going with our own development right away we have some plans and ideas and we got a, a really good uh, friend of, of my brother-in-law who's an expert at all the zoning and all the permitting and he's got a way potentially where we can put 10 of these um, pods as a camp if we buy a house on an agricultural lot that's one acre or more and with that we can create a lot of rental income for for what would normally be just a house on a big lot might now be you know 11 dwellings 10 pods and, and a house so so that's an option that we're looking into and and with, with that if it goes well we can probably get very very big return on investment with so many so many sleeping options on one lot uh, especially since we're here in Florida where we see a lot of tourism and stuff so that could be really interesting but We'll see. Like I said, next next video I'll make a, a follow up on this one. Hopefully, when the when the pods have arrived at the property we want them to, and by then I'll be able to give you more information about what it was like receiving them here in in the United States and and what we had to do to get them from the port to to our house. But so far, about three thousand dollars to ship a forty foot container from Europe to. Um, to USA and we've been using an export broker in Europe and an import broker in the United States and they all have all the papers they need but we've been stuck in between sending papers like I need this okay here it is okay now I send it to my broker and then I ask their broker like I need this and they say okay here it is and then I send it to my broker and then a little nerve-wracking but I think we're on top of everything as of now from what I've heard the last few emails they say we have everything we need except for one paper that's coming on Monday and with that we should be good to go and then you know we'll have to see what they come back with when the container is in Miami uh, as as far as uh, import taxes and tolls and, and whatnot and then we'll put it on the truck and bring it home at least that's the plan and the goal so we'll see thank you for watching I hope you'll find this find this as fun as we do and it's like I know it's not completely real estate this importing part but but using these here pods in the United States will be and, and uh, if you're interested in a pod like this, just let me know and I'll make sure to, to help you get hold of one if, if it's something you you're, can find use for. They come in several different sizes and, and stuff. So the biggest one is, up, I think, 200 square foot, 20 square meter. And the, the smallest ones are just like, I think there's three by three meters. So like nine, 90 square feet, nine square meters, 10 square meter thereabouts. But yeah, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and talk soon. Bye.